What is next for Sean Strickland? You know, it's an interesting question. We don't know what Sean wants next. In fact, as close as Sean's gotten to telling us is that he would like to fight early next year. And a fight early next year, in large part, sounds like I don't want to fight for a while. But if you go look at a calendar, fight early next year means Sean's about ready to go. He is just about ready to get that announcement, get that signed, get the training camp lined up, go into it. I mean, not not for nothing. I want to fight early next year, and I'm looking for a quick turnaround. All right, it all depends how you want to hear it, but I'm just sharing for you. That's how I interpret it. I, I think Sean's looking for a match. Moreover, and the bigger clue that we have right now in Sean saying I want to fight early next year and not having an opponent tells us that Sean doesn't care. That Sean is not going to be a champion that goes out and tries to play games. He's going to handle his championship reign the same way that he's handled his UFC career so far, which is eventually he gets a phone call and he says yes to whatever offer is made to him. Fine. So Sean doesn't care. Fine. But that's very relevant because I am completely convinced that Paulo Costa versus Chemayev is going to be named the number one contenders match. I'm not here to tell you that it is the number one contenders match, right? I mean, not, not for nothing, but we have had a number of fights that are named the number one contenders match. It goes out, it happens. It wasn't the performance, and it either gets yanked back or it never gets discussed again, and we've never had a media member ever call anybody on that. So I, I'm not telling you. I am very confident in telling you that if Chemayev wins, Chemayev will fight for the championship next. My confidence there comes from a standpoint that a statement was made five months ago that if Chemayev says goodbye to 170, commitment to 185, and wins one fight against anybody that can fog a mirror, that his next fight will be for the belt. That statement was made. I remember that statement, and I'm hanging my hat on it. There could have been plenty of other ones made. I'm just sharing for you. I do believe if Chemayev wins, Chemayev fights for the belt. The only issue there is when that statement was made that was believed that it would draw Chemayev into Izzy. The fact that it no longer does, does that change things? Would somebody amend that statement had they known Izzy's not going to be on top? Now, moreover, Chemayev and Sean are pals. They were training partners. And moreover, the classes that Chemayev trained at with Sean were Sean's classes. That means Sean's the coach. And whether Chemayev looks at Sean as a coach or just as a fellow workout partner, I don't know, but that dynamic is tough. I believe that I would fight anyone, anytime. I believe that. I, there's not a coach I've ever had that I would have fought, but I was also never in that position. My coaches were not active fighters. So, I mean, I just, I have a really hard time relating, and that is a big ask. I don't know where Chemayev's head at. I think he'd fight with anybody. I don't know where Sean's head at. I think that he'd fight with anybody. I'm just sharing with you that is something to consider. And if, in fact, Sean would like to get ahead of that for personal reasons or even professional, where he didn't like a matchup, all he has to do is call, uh, call somebody else out now. Whoever goes first is going to get their way here. If Sean comes to the public first and calls somebody else out prior to Dana announcing that Chemayev and Paulo is a number one contenders match, whoever goes first, if Dana makes that announcement and then Sean calls for Cannoneer, doesn't work. And Sean knows this and is still not called for Cannoneer. He is not called for Whitaker. He is not called for Duplices. He has kept that dance card open, which is the way he's ran his career until this point. I think we need to respect that. And I think Sean should get credit for that. But as we are starting to analyze it, it's still a question. And you have a bigger question of who would you guys like to see him fight? Do you think the winner of Chemayev and Paulo Costa is obviously the top guy? Do you not think it's quite so obvious? Where are you going to factor in Marvin Vittori? Marvin Vittori and Sean are very good friends cornered each other in fights regularly. But if Sean doesn't mind fighting Shemaev, who was also his teammate and training partner, I don't know that he's going to take anything away from Marvin Vittori. I don't know that those two are going to be able to build something. I'm just sharing for you. This is a situation where perhaps everything's on the table. As much as it sounds as though Izzy isn't pursuing this match, if you guys got an announcement tonight, 
that it's going to be Izzy versus Sean, you wouldn't feel let down because you want to see some other fight. You probably want to be fired up more because that's the fight you want to see more, right? Like, it's, it's kind of even right now. There's a lot of parity. That wasn't the case when Izzy was there. Izzy went through the division. He was starting to do it a second time. They never went out of the top five to find Izzy an opponent. They had to go out of the top five to find his opponent with Sean Strickland because he'd already beaten everybody and they didn't want to get in there with him. I think Sean... Having a case that he could lay out right now as to why he wants to fight Cannoneer would be compelling. I mean, not for nothing, I want to shut him up. I'm a little bit tired of hearing from this guy. Not, not for nothing. It was a controversial decision. It was a split decision. Cannoneer won the decision. I thought Sean won the fight. Cannoneer won the decision. Those two can sort that out, right? I mean, I'm just trying to make a little bit of a case for Cannoneer. You want to know why I have to do this, guys? Sean's made it clear that he doesn't care. You guys don't care. I believe. I don't believe you have a strong opinion. I believe you like Sean versus Duplessis. I believe you understand Sean versus Izzy is likely in the future. I think you get Costa Chemayev drawing into Sean. I think you like Robert Whitaker getting an opportunity with somebody. I think you're kind of even on those things. Sean doesn't care. You don't care. My problem is the fellow middleweights don't care. That is my problem. How I've gone five days without Bo Nickel calling this guy out is stunning to me. How, I, how I've gone five days with Duplessis not laying out his case. How it's been five days in Jerry Cannonier who sat in the front row watching a guy that he beat become world champion, but he hasn't brought that to your attention. Knowing that Chemayev and Paulo Costa are getting ready to fight in what we believe is the number one contenders match, not only has the organization not said that, they haven't said it. They have not demanded. They haven't declared it. Those two are acting like they're not getting ready to fight each other. By the way, that could be a conversation for another day. There is something that is very off about the promotion or lack thereof between those two about that fight. And they're both just as busy on social media. By the way, they're just not talking about each other. And if you were to go back over their history, well, gee, a month before a fight, do they usually talk about their opponent? Yes, both of them, constantly. This one feels weird. And perhaps that is the reason why this hasn't been named a number one contenders match. Perhaps it's the reason that Sean hasn't called for somebody. Somebody somewhere knows something about that match. And I'm not the only one sitting here saying, it doesn't feel like they're getting ready to fight. So what's next for Sean is very much a case of what difference does it make? I feel Sean saying I want to fight next year means Sean doesn't care. Sean gets credit for that. That's what a champion does. Sean is the only one here whose hands are clean. All the rest of the guys with a massive opportunity that aren't stepping up and saying anything is weird. To see the fellow middleweights not be able to sit back like I'm doing right now and see something is off about Chemayev and Paulo Costa. I don't know what it is. Something is not right. And the move is not to just go after Sean. The move is to go after Chemayev and Paulo Costa. The move is to speak up like I'm doing, say, I don't think those two are going to fight. Lay out whatever case you have and then offer to be the backup fighter. Demand to be the backup fighter. That's the fight to get involved with. Whether you get it or not, the offering and the suggestion and the media behind it, coming out and telling the world, I don't think that fight's going to happen. That's going to get hell. What do you mean you don't think a fight's going to happen? That's a big deal. What do you mean? What do you see? What information do you have? That would be what's called the hook. That is how you get everybody's attention. You then quickly build a bridge into you versus Sean Strickland, and everybody's going to listen. You want to know why they're listening? Because nobody else is saying a goddamn thing. 